Hello, it's Haley Tate with Haley Tate Coaching, and I want to talk to you a minute about health coaching. Um, what is a health coach? Basically, we are people who walk beside others that want to increase their well-being. So we're like a wellness partner. We help you make healthy choices depending on what is important to you. Some people want to make a radical transformation and just know the ins and outs on how do I lose weight? How do I tone up my body? That's what I want to focus on. And some people want to increase their mindfulness and increase the vibrancy that they experience when they eat food and the appreciation that they have for food and how it connects to God. So it's a true mind, body, spirit experience for them. And that's who I'm more interested in working with because for me, that's where lasting change occurs. And I wanted to share with you a couple of points from a book that I just um started reading. It's called Bringing It to the Table on Farming and Food. And I love the concept behind this book because it rings so true to my personal experience because I have yo-yo dieted. I've tried every single fad diet you could possibly try. I have dis disciplined myself to the point where I was hurting myself. I was going to the gym and working out even if I had a broken bone in my body. I was eating strictly um, for the purpose and reason of gaining toned muscle, even though I didn't enjoy what I was eating. I was eating an over excess amount of food to get all that I thought I needed to create this body that I thought I wanted to have. And, you know, the more that I started to pray and ask God, please lead me in how you want me to treat my body pertaining to my workout and nutrition, what I put in my food, because there's just so much information out there, just huge information overload. And I knew deep within that I was putting too much emphasis on the food I was eating. I was spending way too much money, being way too much of a consumer um, surrounding the food that I was eating. And I wasn't enjoying it. I felt very restricted. I felt very just obsessed. Um, and I'm already somebody that had recovered from obsessive compulsive disorders. So I didn't want to trap myself back in that way of doing things. I didn't feel like it honored the Lord. And when we have the Holy Spirit in us, He leads us and guides us um, and gives us that discernment. So um, when I became a health coach, I got certified as an organic health coach. And I don't eat organic. I'm very open about that. Sure, if I, if I can, if I can afford it, or if something happens to be organic and I'm there to buy it, that's fine. But I do really wholeheartedly believe in the connection that we have with the natural world and agriculture and how that plays a big part in the pleasures that we get when when eating food. It helps us um, appreciate it. It helps us connect to the main source of food, which is the Lord, who is a power that is beyond any power that we could imagine. He created the animals um, and plants that we eat. We just tend to them. And just to have that connection to our higher power, um, God through food is truly an intimate and enjoyable experience that I want to touch a little bit more on today. So in this food, I mean, in this book, bringing to the table on farming and food, it talks about the pleasures of eating and it talks about eating as an agricultural act. So an agricultural act in eating is learning to appreciate what you eat and the connection that it has to the land and the soil that it was grown in. So instead of just being a complete consumer who is totally passive, non-argumentative, non-exploratory about, okay, where did this food come from? Where was it grown? What am I eating? As a passive consumer who doesn't have the eating as an agricultural act, it's almost like being a victim. It's allowing someone to grow your food, process it, um, cook it, deliver it to you, and you're just eating it without any kind of connection, without any kind of real pleasure. It's just really to fulfill your appetite. And so um, eating as a pleasurable act makes us become more aware of the control that we have of what we put in our body and how eating impacts the world that we live in. So instead of thinking of ourselves as passive consumers who just buy what we want, we don't really question the price and we buy what we're influenced to want. Um, we're not playing the victim in me anymore when we choose to say, okay, is this food local? Is this food nutritious? Is this food actually real food? And so 
um, there's a couple of points that I wanted to share with you today where I really feel like we can increase our quality of life and what I really try to impress upon when I work with others um, that are surrounding just a holistic um, search of wellness is that many times people think life is not interesting. So what we do is we hurry up and we wolf down our food, we eat our food just to hurry up to go to work. And we hurry up to get through work just to get off work and recreate ourselves. And we rush through that just to turn around and do it all over again without any real true experience that's pleasurable that um, adds to our quality of life. So um, what are we going to do about that? What can we do in this industrialized food system that we live in that is all about volume and and how can we really connect with the food that we eat in the world that we live in? Um, so there are a couple of points. One is we can participate in the food production to the extent that we can. So if we live in a small um, townhome or apartment and all we have is a sunny window, then we can get a box or we can have a, a small garden outside on our patio. And that is the extent that we may be able to start connecting with the natural world. And that is totally okay. That's great. You get to see the food that you grow. You're responsible for it. You see what happens from beginning to end. And then you can eat it knowing that you've had a little bit of a relationship with that food. You've seen what it looked like in its different stages. You're responsible. And then you have that connection agriculturally with the food. It's more pleasurable. Two, we can prepare our own food. You can do this at home. It's an art. It really is. It is um, keeping up your kitchen and your household. It's just enjoying the experience of, of knowing that you've taken responsibility for what you're eating and not having the burden of going to a restaurant and thinking, okay, this is completely done for me. Again, I'm being a passive consumer with not a whole lot of appreciation about what I'm eating. Three, you can buy food that's close to home. So if you live near a farmer's market or a farm where you can get in contact with a gardener or farmer or somebody that has their own um, orchards, then you can buy directly from them. Another thing you can do is learn in self-defense about the economy technology of the industrial food production. So there's a lot of videos out there. There are a lot of books. Um, I mean, Google's at our fingertips just to see what really is going on and not being ignorant about it. And it can be disturbing and very eye-opening and enlightening. And, you know, I just encourage you to take from it what you want. Um, to not, you don't have to become radical and say, well, I'm never going to eat meat again. Or I'm just going to, you know, totally jump on another bandwagon. That's not what I'm saying here. I just want to encourage you to just have some knowledge on the matter of what's going on in this industry. And um, with that knowledge and with that wisdom, God will lead you better down the path that he knows is best suited for you. And lastly, just learn through observation and hands-on experience. If you can visit a farm or a garden or even go to a garden center and you can just pick the brain of somebody that works there and say, hey, you know, what is this plant? What does it do? Is this something that I could grow? Um, just ask questions. It's actually a lot of fun. Gardeners and farmers are actually really typically down to earth. Um, people that would love to share with you what they do and why they do that. They love to share with you about their plants. And at Tate's Apiaries, which is a small family bee farm, we're trying to diversify at this point with different berries. And we have our own garden in the summer and fall. And we would love for you to come out there and engage in one of our you picks, Or you can come out and just ask us questions about what we're growing. We also have honeybees. Um, and we're very curious to see if the honeybees are going to give us any kind of um, different honey this year because they, of course, pollinate on the different flowers of the plants that are growing around us. So we would love to share more with you about that. We're in Willow Springs, North Carolina, about 30 minutes outside of Raleigh. Um, and that will also give you more of an interest and appreciation for um, the food that you eat. Um, let me see if there's anything else uh, Lastly, eating should be an extensive pleasure. So instead of it just being something that we feel like we need to do, hurry up, go do something else, it's extensive. 
it is um, a connection that we have with the world and probably one of the most ways that we can be connected with the world that we live in. And the reason this is so important for me and connection with the natural world is really something I like to explore experientially with the women that I work with. Um, it's because it, it really helps if you're somebody that's overcoming an addiction or an eating disorder, or if you're just not feeling satisfied with life. I feel like in this 21st century, we know anxiety, depression, addiction, higher rates of suicide, all of these things are happening around us because we basically come to terms that life isn't satisfying anymore. The food with we eat doesn't have to be delicious. It doesn't have to be nutritious. It doesn't have to be good. We're losing a lot of appreciation for our body and wanting them just to turn into machines. And at the end of the day, we're put on prescriptions or just unwell. We're sick because of the lack of satisfaction that we have for life and the things available to us. And that makes me also think of the entertainment industry. We've become really passive members in that, just like we have in the food industry. You know, we don't go out and try to entertain ourselves as much anymore and actually experience things because we can sit at home and um, turn on the computer or turn on the television and watch a movie and just be entertained passively. And so really it's taking ownership for how can I increase my quality of life? What is really important for me? And if treating your body well and really being able to hear from God and discern his will for your life and to just feel energetic and to feel passionate about what he's called you to do and, and grateful for how he has healed you on the inside. And you just want to carry that out on the outside by taking care of yourself and, and you want to love others. So you have to love yourself first. All of these things just really revolve back to connection and connection with the food that we eat is important and we're important. You know, we're image bearers of God and it, it really pays off to be considerate about what we put in our body. So I just wanted to share with you a couple of points about how connecting with the natural world can really heal you or God can use it to heal you of disordered eating or addiction or just trying to wrap your mind around about what is important to me about food and what is important to me about fitness and how does that honor my relationship with God? Because in everything we do, we want to honor the Lord. If you have any questions or you want to reach out any further, you can go to HaleyTate.com and or email me at HaleyTateCoaching at gmail.com. And I would love to talk with you more about how connection with the natural world and health coaching and life coaching could help you. Thank you.